like to be Katy Perry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, just channel like Katy Perry. Okay. Sounds kind of like yours. Huh? The mics are about to turn off. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. Mic's on? Okay. Can everyone hear me? Yes. All right, everyone. Fabulous. Everyone have a fun time over these last couple days? Give a round of applause for new schools. They're awesome. We really appreciate them allowing us to be here. We're from Bay Diversity. My name's Sean, and this is Michael. And uh, what we're going to do is talk a little bit about this thing, sort of the elephant in the room, it feels like, in the world of STEM, these 3D printers. So quick show of hands. Who's got a 3D printer in your school? You guys are ninjas on it. You know how to use it, the software. The projects. We had a lot of hands at the beginning, and then I saw a couple trickle down. Well, that's great. OK, so um, who, let, let me paint a story for you. Who, who is in this process right now? OK, so you heard about 3D printing. Maybe you saw a TED Talk. Maybe a student came up to you and said, hey, we need a 3D printer. So you went online, and you researched it. You looked at the maker bots, the printer bots, the every which way XYZ bots, and then you found the one you want. It's in your price range because you just got a grant. It took a few months to get that in, but now you're ready to get your 3D printer. Principal's on board. Everyone's on board. We're excited. We even found a spot for it. So you click order. You get that purchase order sent because they're an approved vendor in your system. And then, finally, a couple months down the road, you go, oh, I already see hands coming up. That printer's there. The box is at the front desk. And you get a call, yes, the printer's there. You go up, get the printer, unbox it. You put it in your spot, open it up plug it in, download the software, and then, OK, what the heck do we do now, <laughs> right? Anybody in that situation? OK, great. So we're going to hopefully solve that problem by walking through one simple project. It is from a fabulous group called eNaval. And it's all 3D printed. Michael's going to talk more about the project. We're going to have some volunteers that are involved with it. It's uh, pretty affordable. And we're going to go through a little bit of the software on the 3D printing, so you can become familiar with that, a bit of the project, and then we're going to wrap up at the end. Sound cool? OK, great. So the first thing to do for this project is to go see what people have already done. And so this is the end result of this project. This is the hand that we're going to be creating. This is a student at NC State who's assembling. And so she's assembling it right there. And that's what we're going to create here. So we're going to bring our volunteers up on stage now. So Michael's going to announce those names. So if you hear your name, just sure. come on up. Can, can you hear? OK, yeah, I'm on, definitely. Um, so uh, I had some volunteers that I ran across earlier. You might know who you are. Uh, if you want to start making your way up here and, and, and get seated. There's one, two, There's OK. Had Debbie Dupree, Mary, Clay Vick. OK, yeah, I recognize yes. some faces. There's three, all right, a few cold feet. Oh boy. A few cold feet. No, there you're here. One, two, three. Maybe pick a new name off that four. handy list. No pun intended. So yeah, our handy list. <laughs> um, we used a very complex sorting algorithm to come up with these names, by the way. <clears throat> Whoever came into the box and was excited. <laughs> so I, I'm I'm short one. Uh, do we have any brave souls who um, I, right there, I mean without even That's wasting any time. So come That's on. That's great. This is great. Round of applause for that yeah. kind of just quick, quick response. Um, that's amazing. So we, we need plenty of that in the world, right? OK, good. So um, hey Amy, Amy, do you want to uh, take, take the end over here? Sure. OK. C come on with me this way. But how about, does this look like a good spot for you? Yes. All right, OK. Where am I going to put you at? Right here is good. Right here is really good. <laughs> Who, who's? Uh, who here likes to, to use hammers and, and hit things? You're the hammer over here. <laughs> all right, you sit right there. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, here's the. Oh, you're the fifth. Okay. Right. All right. So yeah, you come stand, sit, sit right here. Yep. All right. And then my brave 
sixth volunteer, which we're going to learn by doing. We're going to figure out how to use her today, okay? We're going to make it all work. All right. So, um, like Sean said, he said, what do, you, what do you do once you have a 3D printer? We get the question all the time, um, what do I make? And then when you start to make something, you say, well, where's, where's the rule book? Where's, where, where's the instruction manual? Um, a lot of this stuff is available online, and Sean will show you uh, how, to, how to find that stuff. So most of our students, say, um, when they come in the box, our beta box, they say, 3D printer. They've seen it for the first time. They go, it can make anything. And um, they're partially correct. 3D printers can make a lot of things, but they can't make everything. And they certainly don't make everything um, perfect right out of the gate. There's a lot of hammering, a lot of dremeling, um, a lot of trial and error, OK? Uh, we had talked to some people who, who build these Enable hands uh, earlier. And they had said that they had to build three of them before they got one right, OK? So there's a lot of that in prototyping and, and making. So what do you have in front of you here? What, what's, oh, Mary Clay. Good to meet you, Mary Clay. OK, oh, 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 there's one, there's one uh, monkey wrench in the whole deal. Uh, what do each of you have in front of you? What is that right there? What's that thing? It's a whistle. OK, so we're going to try an experiment today. So let's put the whistle around your neck. Let's, let's wear these. It, for, we, we, we made it that way for a reason. These were um, freshly 3D <laughs> printed this morning, these whistles. Oh, here's another whistle. Here you go. <laughs> There's your whistle. All right? OK. Now, what we're going to do is you're going to pick up the pieces in front of you, and you're going to um, tell us what you think. T tell us what you see. Give us some observations. We're going to spend about a minute here. And the microphone is done. I'm going to go in order this way. But yeah, you, you please play. Yeah, you're first. You're, you're on the chopping block. Yay. <laughs> Show us what it is. Um, I see parts that look like could be used to, to make the hand. Here's your microphone. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I see parts that look like they could be used to, to put together to make the hand. We've got parts that look like the digit and digits and the connectors. <clears throat> OK. Have you seen one of these before? Yes, in the beta box yesterday. You saw in the beta box yesterday. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. But I didn't get to really manipulate it. Ah, so um, did you did you just learn anything? Are you observing something new for the first time? Yes. Okay. Well, there's a whistle on your neck. I need you to blow. Make sure you blow the whistle every time you learn something new. Okay. Every time you have a new. There we go. Whistle. Every time you have a new experience <laughs> on the mind. stage. Hmm. Every time your mind We're is engaged, we want you to blow that whistle. So be relentless. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, these pieces here are, um, are, there's like little screws, right? Uh, there's little uh, pre-made fastener pieces that we 3D print. Um, a lot of these things don't always fit the first time. So what do you have in front of you here? Up here or everything? Sure, talk about the tools, great. Um, there's all kinds of different tools up here, cutting <coughs> tools and screw, uh, screwdriver and different pliers. And um, I assume that these things are to make some of these parts fit together? Sure, sure. That's exactly right. Uh, a lot of the tools that you see in front of you are, um, uh, you, you might not use all these tools to assemble a hand. But at some point, you're going to need to use, if you assemble enough of these, you'll need a screwdriver. You'll need these little jeweler pliers to pull, pull things through, OK? Screwdrivers and things like that. So that's a finger, right? And we sort of threaded this, um, this string. What's that string feel like? Um, it's elastic. Okay, and what do you think it does? Uh, it helps the joint to pull. Okay, did you know that before you got up here? Um, I saw one at the... Darn it. Okay. No the whistle. creator No here. whistle today. All right. <laughs> Sorry. No worries. So there's a little piece here. Let's try and um, figure out where that it goes. That I don't know what it is. All right. Um, I'm thinking that maybe it would fit in one of these holes to hold it together. Maybe. Okay, let's try it. I'm going to hold this for you. I'm going to free up your hands a little bit. Take it on here and then do it? I don't know. Figure it out. <laughs> so while she's working on that, <laughs> while she's learning by doing over there, let's go over here to the computer. I'm going to show you some of the resources that they're all using. So this is where we start every single time when we're working on a project. We Google it, right? Like, who doesn't Google do that? So this is Thingiverse. If you're not familiar with it, it's iTunes for more like Napster for, for stuff, really, because it's all free, and you can download it. STL files are the name of, of the files that 3D printers use. And this is the exact, this is the, digital file that we've printed out here and that we're all assembling. So you can go to this website, and at the end, I'll show you a resource where we have all these links in one place. 
And all you need to do to start a project when you have that printer set up is click download. It's going to take you down here to all these different and you can just download, download one right away. For this particular project, there's also, on Instructables, a very detailed series of steps with photos and videos, even specific diagrams on how to assemble the individual components, certain knots. Here are the 3D printer settings, and we're going to talk about that in a moment. And then here's the important part are the components. Where can you cheaply get the Velcro that we're using up here, the screws that we're getting up here, the elastic that, that, that she just pointed out to us. So that's all included right here. And um, there's going to be a final link to all of this as well. So that's a another resource, Instructables. It's a wonderful tool. And then this is the actual the, the decentralized organization behind this project. It's an incredible project called Enable. And these are actually workable prosthetic hands that real children will be wearing. And this is their website, and I really encourage you to check out that resource. It's, uh, it's really a tremendous, a tremendous group. So we've downloaded our file, you can see down here, Raptor Reloaded. That's the name of this particular hand that we're creating. And we're going to open this software right here. This is called Cura. See, you may interface with this if you're working with a 3D printer. And what this software is, it's the step between the CAD, or the computer-aided design. So that might be a tool Let's say SolidWorks. There's a wonderful resource called Tinkercad, which is free online. It's a great way to get started with 3D modeling. And uh, there's also Google SketchUp and other. Autodesk, in fact, gives all of their software away to education for free. So there's wonderful 3D modeling tools. But that's for the actual design. This is to convert the design into something that's 3D printable. And so what you're loading in is really just a bunch of triangles. The, mo the STL files, it's just a bunch of little pixels with triangles together. and then OK, what resolution do we want to print at, which is the individual lines on the side of a 3D printed object? How big do we want it to be? Um, what kind of settings do we, do we want to have with this print? So this is where you're really specifying exactly what's going to happen. And in, you can even see in Cura here, if you click that, that button, the individual layers that this component is going to build that we downloaded. So the first layer you're going to see is just red lines along the side. That's the exterior. And then it fills in the interior with a, almost a cross-hatched pattern. That cross-hatched pattern is right here, fill density. So 3D printers are notoriously slow, whereas something like a laser cutter, which you may have seen in the box, is very quick. In just a couple minutes, you can get something. It can be difficult to integrate 3D printing into a, a short, fast-paced workshop. So it's important to think about the settings and how can you really optimize the settings to print as fast as possible. If you're doing a lot of, of prints, you have a high volume of students, something we, we deal with all the time. So fill density, you want that low, maybe 15%, 7%. Your part will be a little less strong, but it's going to print faster. You also have your layer height. So that's the individual lines that you're going to see on the side. This printer is currently printing at uh, about 200 microns, which is this setting here. That's about mid-level resolution. It'll get you pretty fast. Cura is automatically generating the amount of time right here. And all you need to do to get out of Cura into your print is either save your toolpath to a micro SD card, or you can plug directly in. So that's Cura. And then the final link, you're going to see more resources on how, to use, on how to use this program. You can see it's very intuitive. Does it make sense? Seems like it's pretty easy to use. Yeah, it, it's pretty intuitive, and, and you can get a sense of it here. So that's Cura. And then you can take over to the 3D printer. This is one particular type of 3D printer, but it's basically the same technology. There's really three types of uh, technologies that you'll hear about when you talk about 3D printing. This one is called FDM. It's the most popular one. That's where it takes these spools of plastic. And we love PLA. So you'll hear PLA, ABS, one called NinjaFlex. Got some hammering? Nice. Yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> so so uh, I, I see some uh, really interesting things happening right now. Yeah, let's take a, let's um, take a pause let's, and find let's out. Let's take a minute. We, we've given everyone a, a few seconds to kind of get acclimated with, with, their, with their components and, and their portion of the build process. And I've already seen 10 mistakes. And I think <laughs> every one of them are beautiful. Um, they're all learning um, opportunities. And these are the common mistakes that I think I made, right? And these are common mistakes that we see students make. So. Um, uh, right here, you, you're putting the pieces together, and, and what do you note about the fingers? They're a little tight, maybe? They are tight. Okay. But I need to <clears throat> have a connector of some sort to make sure that they stay together. Right, okay. So that's where I'm at now. But so these things as you maybe. put them in, it <clears throat> has become more and more tight to put them into that. So how do you think we might... Uh... Evidently, I'm going to use a Dremel. So we're going <laughs> to... Have you ever used a Dremel before? No. Great. This is yes, a great moment. experiment. 
<laughs> so um, there's uh, you're moving away. <laughs> <laughs> so there's there's a high and low setting. We we there's a fifty fifty chance it's either gonna jump out of her hand and scoot across the floor, <laughs> or it'll be the low setting. Were there, were there any like wide receivers back in the day? Just be right here to get it. Someone learned something. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. Let's, let's use that Dremel. Let's, 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 let's hear it sing. Nope, don't be scared of it. So maybe we can uh, start to uh, Dremel down these little pieces here just to make them thinner. This is good, good quality control and quality assurance here. That's great. <laughs> so what she's doing is she's noticing something that we could have changed on the software. So remember we talked about the 200 microns. So that's kind of fat, actually. So had we had printed at a higher resolution, the gaps between these charts be wider because it's more exact to the designed file. So perhaps we could go back and say, look, this requires a little bit of finicking at the end. We could print at a higher resolution so there's, there's less of this downstream. So there's a lot of interplay between the settings that you, that you use and if you're assembling something like this, how well they fit together. Um, this is a great opportunity to talk about fits and tolerances and things that mechanical engineers deal with all the time. So, so did it go in a little easier this time? A little easier, yes. Okay. Great. <laughs> You'd want to do more. All right, so did you learn something? Yes. Okay. Okay, good. Whistle Where's that whistle at? Oh. We have rules. We have rule. This, that's our only rule. Yes. There we go. Whistle you learned moment. something. All right, so what about you? I, I see that the finger's now in. Um, kind, of, kind of hold this up for the camera a little bit. Uh, see if we can sort of zoom in a little bit. So the finger's on there, but it's not really moving that well, right? <laughs> So she used a pin for the finger in the knuckle, which is wrong, clearly. And, clearly, uh, I only have one pen. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was that was totally by design. Uh, I set you up. I'm sorry. But yeah, so this happens often. People put the wrong pins in, in the wrong holes, and um, now we have to figure out how to get that out. So we might have to use something like a drill. And you broke it. Great. So it's going to be easier to drill out. So. <laughs> drill that out of the finger? Yeah. Figure it out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do we have something to hold that? Your two hands. This might be a collaboration opportunity, I think. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Did you sign the waiver before no, you came? No, I didn't. Oh, that's OK. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> cat-like reflexes over here. <laughs> Broke it. There we go. It's broken nice. off. Sometimes that's Great. the solution too. <laughs> you can always print another one, right? Okay. So, so what, 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 what did you learn there? Um, that this is obviously for the knuckle. And, and, <laughs> and drills. If it doesn't fit, just destroy it and take it out. Right. right. Good. <laughs> So that, if you're working on this project and you want to integrate it, what we do all the time is we want to keep the parts separate. So we just put them in bags and we label the bags and we put the bags in separate spots. Even different stations is a great way to integrate this workshop because there's many different components and a lot of the components look similar, but they actually go in different spots. Oh, let's, let's share that. That's a good observation. Okay, with this piece, um, I have like the, like a hinge and I have the elastic pieces of string. And so with all of these folded down, I had to thread all of these pieces through and it goes under, not over. Mm. And then when I fold the fingers down and apply some pressure, it looks like um, like strings on the piano, anyone has played a piano before. When I pull this piece, it brings that finger up. Oh. So. But it has to be. <laughs> Which finger is that? One. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I'll have to knot it off so that it doesn't slip through uh -huh. and it has to be rethreaded. Right. Um, so you, you actually rolled right through this exercise. This is one of the, the harder parts of, of assembling these hands that I think. And um, uh, you, you completely just blew right through it. So uh, what's your secret? 
Okay. Is there something in your past experience maybe that made you prepared well, for this? I used to play the piano. Okay. Yes. Oh. All right. <laughs> well, how about that? She made a she made a same string. She made a relationship between what she was working on and what she did in her past. That's great. Good. I'll keep working so I get it knotted up. Did you learn anything just then? Oh yes. Oh, hold on. Oh yeah, you did. Yeah. Woo! That's a great one. <laughs> Go, goes without saying. <laughs> oh, that's fabulous. So what do we have over here? Okay, um, I have the hand with the strings. It's already um, put together, and the strings are leading down from the hand to attach to these little pieces here that fit into, um, it's almost like the guide. It's going to guide the strings for movement. So when you bend the hand, they go in and out. I think the Dremel tools needed because they're not sliding very easily. Uh -huh. They're pretty tight and they're stuck. So um, in assembling the hand, I would probably smooth these out because when they came out of the printer, they're, they're pretty rough, so they're not sliding as easily. And if, so if this was this were my hand, I would have trouble. It would probably get stuck as it is. So mm -hmm. we'd have to somehow lubricate this to move a little better. And um, I'm not sure, but it looks like this, this piece here is supposed to come off, but it's pretty well stuck in place, so I can't. I'd have to have another tool to, to remove it. You find all the flaws, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's it's just, 80% perfect, and you found all 20% of the flaws. Great. I just want it to it's work, very critical. Uh, work properly <coughs> for, the pro, you know, for the person exactly. who's using well, it. Well, I, I have a, a, a fun opportunity. Can we pass that Dremel down here? Let's test your theory and see if you're right. Okay. I'm a media specialist, so I'm used to fixing things. All right, <laughs> good. <laughs> that break. Our, our special sorting uh, algorithm shows well. I think I will need to work on it a little bit longer. Okay. If you want to take a break. And <laughs> <work on this. laughs> I, I, I think that's my job. Um, <laughs> tell you. Okay, wonderful. She's wonderful. Media specialist right there, everybody. Um, <laughs> Okay, so we see that everybody's working uh, to try and, and they're, they're all having challenges to getting the, the, the hands uh, assembled. Anytime, whether you're building a robot or you're building a, um, uh, you know, a computer or coding, you're going to run into challenges, all right? But eventually, if you have an end goal, you have something that you want to achieve, uh, all these little, um, these, these moments of, of, of just struggle uh, mean nothing uh, once you finally end with, with that thing that you were passionate about creating um, all along. So, Amy, what do you have in your hand here? <clears throat> I, I have a finely grummeled hand. Get this. Um, it's grummel, right? Gr what is it? Grummel? Say it. I have a finely grummeled hand. Grimmeled hand. Grimmeled, sorry. You mean, um, you mean drimmeled hand. Yes, I mean drimmeled. Drimmel, okay. <laughs> Thank you. So blow the whistle. You learned how to say drimmel. I didn't drimmel. get a whistle. <laughs> Someone blow a whistle for it. Okay. There you go. Thank you, Debbie. Um, my hand is a little different in color and, than the other ones. It has a Velcro woven on the sides mm -hmm. through the base. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking that wraps around um, a hand or um, an arm. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I guess I, I pretend here. So that is um, what secures it. And then when it, it bends where your wrist might bend, all those fingers come in, including the thumb, for a fine grip. Let's see if we can hold on to the microphone here. Oh. Great. Let's, let's, let's twist and see what happens here. It's nerve-wracking. It is. It's going to be a big thud. Well, but normally there'd be some, something right here. Oh. We're there. Oh. <laughs> Good job. Congratulations. 
<laughs> there's also this part that's in yep. There's a pad inside underneath the um, palm or the fingers, which looks like it's there for comfort because the plus or the 3D could be sharp on certain edges. A nice padding for comfort. Right. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And these these tendon strings here. What do you think they're for? But there, there's some that stretch and there's some that are that are very static that, yeah. that don't don't stretch. The the tendons seem to be controlling different fingers and how they can bend. Uh, the pointer finger is tighter. The pointer finger and the pinky and the ring finger are, mm -hmm. are looser. Mm -hmm. Am I catching that correctly? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, they normally are, but the, this piece here, we just broke it. Oh, okay. No, you just broke it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, I mean, it looks like it's, it's intentionally there, um, tightened and loose for a reason. Mm -hmm. yep. And it looks like it could easily be fixed, too. Yeah, we would, we would just um, use these screws right here, right? So we would use these screws here to sort of tune the, the hand to get it to where it opens and closes mm -hmm. um, evenly, right? What is cool. this part for? It looks like it comes out like it's a buckle. Yeah, yeah. it just keeps this piece from coming oh, out. from sliding out, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Not a super critical part, but it's there. <clears throat> all right. Fabulous. So thank you all so much for volunteering on the eNable project. Let's give our volunteers a round of applause. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> <laughs> so just to quickly to to recap, the this is not a 25-minute project in real life. This is a two-hour project in real life without the 3D printing. So this is something that you may want to do over two, three class periods, have different stages. But think about the, think about the tie-ins um, to biomedical engineering, mechanical engineering with the 3D printing. There's so much science and, and biology behind what it is. And at the end, there's a community engagement piece to this project because there's an entire donor's connection relationship that you can go and actually have insurance to make sure the hands are up to snuff. But eNable will give these hands to actual, actual children who need prosthetics. So I think that's a tremendous thing, and that's something that we do in the box. And uh, that's something we're really excited about doing more. So we learned about 3D printing. We learned a little bit about the software. Um, there's, we, there's some resources that you're going to be able to go to to learn more about this project. And um, just to conclude with the final slide, um, we saw some whistles being blown here, which is great. Hopefully, we engaged some minds. And students are asking the same types of questions when this project is happening in the box. So we recommend this project because there's not necessarily one exact way to do it. They're problem solving all along the way because there's always little hangups and different ways to do things faster, more efficiently. And those are the conversations that we really see around these projects, which you know, I think these projects, when they're designed well, get those conversations out. So just to conclude, thank you all so much for allowing us to be here. This was a tremendous gathering of minds. We've learned so much. Uh, please, if you're interested in learning more about the beta box, this project, or just want to say hi, um, that's our email. Uh, this is the resource right here for the links, betaversity.com slash hands. It's got the links to everything that we talked about. And um, we respond to everyone on Twitter. So if you tweet us, we will respond to you. And uh, finally, later in the day, there will be a Betabox event given away to someone in the audience, which we're very excited to find out who that is. So um, thank you all so much. I appreciate your time. <laughs> so it's um, now. It's with you know, great privilege I want to uh, introduce Sanjay Pal, who's a great partner of Scaling STEM. He's the Vice President of Advanced Operations at Cisco to the stage. So come on up. <laughs> and then we'll get the focus.